I'm always excited. I've never been in a new month in uh, July. <laughs> Hallelujah. As you're standing, I would that you open your Bibles to 1 Timothy chapter 2, and I'll be reading out of the first seven verses. Hallelujah. Primera de Timoteo, capítulo 2, los primeros siete versículos. Hallelujah. When you have it, you can say, man, God bless you, our visitors this morning, hermanos, hallelujah. Sister Josie, God bless you, sweetheart. Thank you, Jesus. Let's, before we start, I want us to pray for uh, sis, our sister Kathy. She's in the hospital, and she needs our prayers, and she needs our Father to touch her body. And... We believe in miracles, and we believe that God is good, and there is none else. He's the God of all flesh. So let's pray uh, that the Lord would do a, a wondrous work in her body. Heavenly Father, we come before you, Lord Jesus. We praise you and give you honor and glory, Father, because, Father, who do we have in heaven that can do these miracles, Father, that can do these things that we ask and that you would answer? We have only you, my Lord. Father, I pray that you would touch our sister Kathy, Lord Jesus. Do a work in her body, even as uh, how you know how to work, Father. Amen, amen. Forgive our arrogance, Lord, when we ask that you do this and that you do that. Father, you know every fiber of her body, every fiber of her being. And Lord, because of that, we call out to you. We're totally dependent on you, my Lord Jesus, and we're asking, Father, for your mercy your grace, and your power, Father, because we know it's your will to bring healing. And in Jesus' precious and holy name, we ask all these things, Father. Thank you, my Lord, in Jesus' name. And everyone said, amen. amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And certainly we have our, uh, our petitions as usual. We, we pray for those as well. Amen. So let's look at uh, uh, chapter 2. Hallelujah. And the word of the Lord reads, I urge then, first of all, that petitions, prayers, intercession, and thanksgiving may be made for all people, for kings and all of those in authority, that we may live peaceful and quiet lives in all godliness and holiness. This is good and pleases God our Savior, who wants all people to be saved and to come to a knowledge of the truth. For there is one God and one mediator between God and mankind, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself as a ransom for all people. This has now been witnessed to at the proper time. And for this purpose, I was appointed a herald and an apostle. I am telling the truth, I am not lying, and a true and faithful teacher of the Gentiles. Lord Jesus, we've come before you, Father, but now I commit my works unto you. Help me, my Lord. I need you. We need you, Jesus. Amen, my Lord. Amen. You can take your seats. The classes are dismissed, and I think they've already... Don, thank you, Lord. I want to talk to you about a mediator, uh, one mediator. And, and I know that this, uh, this uh, scripture opens up with prayer and in an urgency to pray. Paul told his young pastor, Timothy, I urge you, I urge you. I'm trying to think of other words. I mean, that's the best one that I can think of. Le urjo, le, le, le recomiendo uh, que oren a todo tiempo. You know, it says, I'm, I'm, I'm uh, urging you, first of all, uh, that petitions, prayers, and intercessions, you notice that each word, you would think that it's all the same thing, but they're not. You know, some are petitions that we ask for. I have a petition. And uh, we pray 
And then there's an intercession that we consistently pray for a petition or a said person, whatever the case may be. And certainly, thanksgiving be made for all people. Now, why do you think that Paul would ask Timothy to give thanksgiving for all uh, prayers for all people everywhere? And the idea is that when you're thankful for someone uh, for doing something in your life, you're thankful and you're telling them, you know, uh, thank you because I know you've done it before and I know it gives me hope that you can do it again. Te damos gracias porque yo sé que lo has hecho en un tiempo atrás y yo sé que lo puedes hacer otra vez más. Aleluya. Ya ves, en tiempos el Señor nos ha contestado nuestra plegaria, ha contestado nuestras oraciones y hemos recibido el para bien, el sostén de nuestra uh, vida, ¿verdad? Y aún eh, la salud que necesitamos diariamente, ¿verdad? So, aún uh, una sanidad, gloria a Dios, y le alabamos al Señor por todo lo que ha hecho, porque esa es mi confianza. Si lo ha hecho antes, yo sé y espero que lo vaya a hacer una vez más. You know, we are just so happy uh, that sometimes the Lord has healed in other times. And, and that's why I think I started saying that years ago, I can hardly wait to see how God's going to bless. We've been praying for you, sister, in a mighty way. And we can hardly see how, uh, wait to see how God is going to bless. And... Uh, so that's a good thing. Uh, praying is good for the soul. It keeps you in tune with the Father. Uh, some of the message, not necessarily the uh, verbatim, but uh, our, our brother Ed was teaching Sunday school, and he was saying that, and to me, what I was hearing is that when we talk to the Father, we're reading the Scripture, and the Lord is talking to us at the same time. And I, and I think it's good. It's good for the soul. Es bueno para nuestra alma orar y leer la palabra al mismo tiempo, porque sabemos que Dios nos está escuchando y que nos está contestando a nuestras necesidades, you know. So, it, and, and, and above all else, it pleases the Lord. Uh, it pleases the Lord. Uh, especialmente uh, orando, haciendo súplicas. Mira, el versículo 3 dice... Esto es bueno y agradable a Dios nuestro Salvador. ¿Qué es bueno y agradable? Que nosotros mantengamos una comunicación con Él a través de nuestra pregaria, pero porque le estamos dando gracias también. Sabes que usted está agradecido. You know, you would be so thankful when you're praising God. Well, I'm not used to doing that. Well, get used to it because you know what? If you stop to think what he has given you, oh, somebody help me. What he has given you, you'll be thankful for. My God, did they help me preach. Yeah, God has done so many things for you. And I know he wants me to praise him. So when I come in those doors, I want to start praising God. I started doing that a long time ago. Uh, uh, when uh, after I got saved, uh, uh, I started getting wise here because I would, I would, I, I was instructed and trained to observe my environment, to be aware of my environment, and I apply that in all areas of my life. So when I would go to church, uh, I would see that. Wow, look at that! That sister, she's really in a blessing. And look at that brother. Why he crying? Why is he crying? Because God did something for him. God did something, and he's so appreciative, and he can sing just like me. He can't, but he was praising God. Cantaba con todo su corazón porque estaba agradecido con lo que ha hecho Dios en su vida. Hallelujah. Él cantaba como yo. Y pues ya en cualquier nota, Z. Oh, uh, no sé, you know, the, in, 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 in Z minor, <laughs> Z minor, that sounds good. Uh, and, uh, but he was uh, happy, and I know that the Lord was pleased with his prayer and thanksgiving. 
I know that the Lord will be pleased with you when you start praising God. So I learned to walk into the church and to expect healing that night. Because we would go Wednesday night and we would go Sunday night. So Sunday morning was a, a given. It was a no-brainer. I'm going to praise God. But I started thinking, I said, Lord, that somebody would get saved. Somebody would repent. And, and I'd look at the altar. I was the only one up there. Well, I'm that one, Father. Thank you, Jesus. I'm repenting. We've got to be able to thank God for everything that we ask him for. Thank you, Jesus. And, and so we praise him for our health and well-being. Uh, in some cases, yes, for salvation, uh, which is very, very important. The question was made this morning, and I really appreciate it, Brother Ed. The, the, how would you like a sermon uh, to come to church and hear a, a soft sermon with ooh, icing on it with some sprinkles and everything? No, Or do you want to hear a sermon with some consequences? You know, uh, you're in trouble now. Uh, because I got consequences today. And we've got uh, to be able to preach and teach and pray for everyone in need, yes? All right, now I'm going to get into the message. No, so all prayer is important. Toda oración es importante porque primeramente es parte de nuestra alabanza. Ponte a pensar. Es parte de nuestra alabanza a estar agradecido con Dios y orando. Uh, you know what? Prayer is important, first of all, because it's an important part of worship. In your worship, you should be thankful to the Lord. Yes, we make requests and prayers, etc. We thank the Lord for what he has done before, and he can do it again. Thank you, Jesus. And, and so it strengthens it strengthens our faith. Uh, it strengthens my faith in worship because I somehow believe that God is accepting my worship, that our worship uh, as a body of Christ is a sweet savor unto the Lord's nostrils. Que, que nuestra alabanza es un olor fragrante hasta... A, a, para el Señor cuando estamos alabando y dándole gracias a, a Él, ¿verdad? So, it, it's good. Uh, you got to praise Him, especially when you know how much you owe Him. Uh, how much do you owe the Lord? I owe Him everything. What can I pay Him with? Nothing. You know what? There's nothing that you and I can do. There's nothing, how, it, that, there's nothing that you can do. Uh, to pay back God for what it has done for you. No hay nada que podemos hacer que le podamos devolver, devolver al Señor, reembolsarle por todo lo que ha hecho por nuestra vida. No hay nada, es imposible, solamente entregar nuestra vida a Él. Hacer un sacrificio vivo. Vamos a Romanos 12 y, 1, y, y, y versículo 1 y 2. Romanos, Romans chapter 12 and verse 1. This is, this is good. This will preach all week long. Those of you by Facebook and, and YouTube, I want you to take particular notice that, you know what? There's nothing that you and I can do, nothing anybody in here combined can do to pay back for what God has done for us. But there's something that we can do that will give him pleasure. Look at uh, Romans chapter 12 and verse 1 and 2. Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind then you'll be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. Por lo tanto, hermanos, tomando en cuenta la misericordia de Dios, les ruego que cada uno de ustedes en adoración espiritual ofrezca su cuerpo como sacrificio vivo, santo y agradable a Dios. No se amolden al mundo actual, sino sean transformados Mediante la renovación de su mente. ¿Cómo podemos hacer eso? 
Una pregunta. ¿Cómo puede renovar, uh, eh, o, o sea, re, uh, renovar, verdad, su mente, su manera de pensar? Es con la palabra de Dios. Es buscando de Él. How can you renew the spirit of your mind? And that's through reading of the word of God, through prayer. The Holy Spirit of God begins to unlearn all that mess that we got in there. How many got junk in the trunk? Let me see. Somebody, amen. We got junk up in there, uh, in here. <laughs> And I said it wrong earlier. And, uh, but we've got to unlearn the things of the world because it's dragging you down. You can't get spiritual if you're not reading the word of God. And, and so that's how we renew the mind. Así se podemos a, a, a renovar el espíritu de nuestra mente, ¿verdad? La renovación de nuestra mente. Así podrán comprobar. ¿Cuál es la voluntad de Dios? Buena y agradable y perfecta. ¿Sabes de qué? El mundo, la gente y aún el cristianismo uh, se preocupa tanto porque no conocen la voluntad de Dios para sí mismos. ¿Qué es lo que quiere Dios que haga yo? Nos preocupamos, batallamos y, y, y nos molestamos en espíritu porque no... No sabemos qué es la voluntad de Dios, pero nunca vamos a la palabra de Él. You know, we, uh, the world and, and even in, in Christianity, people struggle. They strive. They have painful thoughts of what does God want me to do? I don't know his will for me. But they fail to go to the word of God. And that's what we need to do constantly is to... Renew the word of God. How can we renew the word of God? Come Sunday school. Somebody say amen. amen. <laughs> Come to church. Read your Bible. Do something. And, and, and so that's how you renew the spirit of your mind. That's how we can please God in everything that we do. And uh, I, I want to tell you something uh, about prayer for officials Let's go back to verse 2. For kings and all of those in authority, that we may live peaceful and quiet lives in all godliness and holiness. Now, I used to think, well, well, wait a minute. Peaceful, it's not like we're at war here, but we're at war somewhere else. And we're at war in here. And we're at war in here. God wants you to have peace. And, and, uh, and he, quiet lives, unas vidas quietas, uh, especialmente por los gobernantes y por todas las autoridades para que tengamos paz y tranquilidad. Y cuando se lee la palabra tranquilidad, sabemos que es en nuestro ser, nuestro pensar. Necesitamos esa paz. Pero ¿qué tiene que ver con el orando por presidentes y todo. Hay veces hay leyes que se ponen que no nos gusta esa ley. Hay cosas que pasan y cuánto, y pasan porque nosotros no estamos orando. Uh, how can uh, we have all this peace and, and quiet lives uh, and live in godliness and holiness? What does that have to do with interceding for for uh, for kings, and really that means anybody in high authority, and governors and everyone, police, look at that. Uh, we have all of these things, but if, you're, if you are like me and somebody that you know, anytime you hear about politics, you get upset. Well, I guess I'm the only one, Lord, I, 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 I repent in the name of Jesus. Um, DC is another person when I start hearing the programs on the radio when we're driving along to go and run this errand or go to the doctor or do something and I look at him and I says I'm all mad you know and uh, you know I get all grouchy and everything because of this politician or 
or, or, or this lawyer did this in this case and let the bad guy go free. And, and we get all upset, don't we? Ah, uh, did I say we? How many, y'all are okay with it? No, y'all get mad. I see that smile. I see y'all, that lipstick don't throw me off, man. I know you get mad. Uh, uh, we get mad, we get angry, and we ridicule and criticize and do worse things than anything else for everybody when they fail. But we forget to remember to praise the Lord for the good things that happen. And the Bible says, pray for them. Pray for them. You want peace of mind? Pray for them. Uh, you want a quiet life? Get tranquila, una vida tranquila. Ora por ellos. Yep, yep, yep. En santidad, you know, you want a godly life. You want a holy life. You don't want to be bothered by it. You hear all of these pedophiles and all these other situations going out there, and you're getting upset and everything like me. Somebody say Anybody else? Well, okay, the cameras are off. Nobody, everybody raise your hand. Orale, ebe, orale. Do it like this, watch out. And, uh, and the idea is that we get all upset, but we're, we're failing to pray. And that's good. I mean, it's not good, but we need to pray. They need our prayers. That's why they mess up sometimes, because they need our prayers. They need your prayers. Maybe you pray longer than I do. Maybe you pray two minutes more than me. One minute. So altogether, three minutes, somebody got to somebody help me, Jesus. You know, we got to pray longer than three minutes, five minutes. ¿Verdad que sí? Tenemos que orar más que tres minutos. O bendícele, Señor. Aleluya. Bueno, bye. And that's not the way it's done. That's not the way it's done. They need our prayers. And some of them put their lives in danger to keep us safe. Even to keep those that are out there rioting and causing mayhem and everything and to keep them safe too. Isn't that something? That's crazy. Well, you need to know that while prayer and supplication have their place in our lives, in our church, uh, we need to focus on something very, very important. And that part of this scripture is the one that we read. Look at verses 3 uh, through 6. This is good and it pleases God our Savior, who wants all people to be saved and to come to a knowledge of the truth. For there is one God, one mediator between God and mankind, the man Christ Jesus who gave himself as a ransom for all people. This has now been witnessed to, a, uh, to at a proper time. Jesus gave his life for you just at the right time. Boy, you were going to mess up worse, and Jesus died for you so you could get saved right then and there. Hallelujah. Oh, I... I yeah, let me tell you something. Years ago, I thought it was so bad on my motorcycle. I would get on the freeway and get off on the exit, and I know that's a high traffic area. And there was 18 wheelers, gravel trucks. We call them gravel buckets and all of that kind of stuff. Truck driver talk, y'all probably don't know. And uh, they would be coming, and I'd wait. And then I'd drive out into the lane, and I'd look in the mirrors when I would see the rig coming closer. And I'd look back, and I'd rev my bike, and I'd open it up. And I'd take off, and that rig would be going, blowing its horn. And I was right here, and he was catching up. And I would hook it. By the time I hit third gear, I was going like 90-something miles an hour. I was gone. I was gone. I did that a couple of times. Then one day, I came down and I said, I feel lucky. I came down and I did the same thing. And here comes, and I waited on the shoulder. And I saw a rig way out there. So I came out into the lane and I waited. Bam, bam. If you hug the tank with your knees, 
You can burn out and you can keep a straight line because your bike won't switch. And I was ready. I was going. I was in first gear and I rev, rev, rev. And then I go, what? And then whoop, I couldn't hit second. My shifter fell off. The screw was loose from the shifting rod. And I wheeled that bike over, got out of the way, and the wind blew my ears. And I had a helmet on, man. <laughs> that rig passed by so fast. Whoa! And I never did it again, Brother Ed. Because at the right time, somehow, I escaped death. And it was my own stupidity, but God helps stupid people. Yeah, he do. And yeah, he did. And look at me. I came out all right. <laughs> and, uh, and, and so there's some things that you do in life, and then it might not be that exciting. It might not be that dangerous. And... You know you need Jesus, and he's there for you because he did it at the right time. Now, now, uh, you know, we know that prayer pleases God, yes, but in this statement, in this accord, in este acuerdo, la palabra de Dios está muy en común con Juan 3.16. In, in this, in this, uh, uh, a scripture that we read that there's one mediator between God and uh, between man and God, the man Christ Jesus. And it really goes to John 3.16 because he said that uh, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Porque tanto amó Dios al mundo. Tanto, ¿qué tanto te amó a ti? Nadie más quería algo con usted. My, my, God so loved the world. How much did he love you? Didn't nobody want anything with you? Didn't want to hang with you no more. Oh, would wrinkle their face when they heard your name. But God loved you. Jesus loved you. Uh, 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 and he gave his only son. Dio su hijo unigénito para que todo el que en él cree no se pierda, sino que tenga vida eterna. Una vida eterna con el Señor. An eternal life with the Lord Jesus. With God Almighty in heaven. He loves you that much. All right. And... And so the, God is so good. And that's what he did. And, and, and even in, in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, you probably jumped the gun and thought it was uh, a new creation. But look at verse 14 and 15. Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 14 and 15. Whoops, here I go. I'm back over here. He said, the word of God says, because we know that the one who raised the Lord Jesus from the dead will also raise us with Jesus and present us with you himself. All this for your benefit so that the grace that is reaching more and more people may cause thanksgiving to overflow to the glory of God. And if you put it in a nutshell, it's saying that Jesus Christ died for all. For you, for me, for everybody in the media, for everybody that hasn't heard the gospel yet, he died for everybody so that we can have eternal life. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So salvation has been provided for everyone, for all, but only to those who accept them and are saved. So you see... There's still people out there that haven't accepted the Lord, that hasn't been accepted salvation. Hay gente que no ha aceptado el Señor uh, como Salvador, a pesar de que Él vino y dio y mostró 
salvación para toda la creación, para todo hombre, pero no todo hombre lo ha aceptado como salvador. Entonces tenemos un trabajo que hacer. We have a job to do, a work to do. We don't, we don't get saved for works. We're saved by his mercy and grace. But we work because we're grateful to him. We, we do things for him. Amen. So uh, God uh, and the reason why, look at here, uh, God has somewhat against man. And you know what that is? Sin. Dios tiene algo contra el hombre, y es el pecado. En el, en, el, en el jardín de Edén, entró el pecado a través de Adán. Y por causa de él, o de ese hecho, ha entrado a toda la humanidad. Entonces, por lo mejor que nos vistamos y somos en la sociedad y todo eso, somos pecadores. You know, uh, sin has gone uh, into the Garden of Eden and in Adam and through Adam, we have it all through all humanity, everyone. And despite how good we may look and dress and whatever wrong we have in society, in that high ladder of uh, prosperity and economics and all of that kind of stuff, it doesn't matter. You're a sinner. We're sinners. If we believe in Jesus Christ and we're born again, we're sinners saved by grace with the propensity to sin again. So we need Jesus. Tenemos la propensidad de ser o de cometer pecado a pesar de que somos salvos en el Señor. Pero esa es la gracia de Dios que Él nos perdona cuando nos arrepentimos, ¿verdad? The grace of God is that He forgives us when we repent of our sins. And the world doesn't understand it because they don't have the Spirit of God in them. They don't understand what's so wrong with the way I live. What the, you know what I heard in the news yesterday? It was in the afternoon news that uh, people today, by the age of 40, are still not married. And people that have uh, an education, a bachelor's, and some that are not educated are probably not married either. And what's the difference is that society has gone so bad that they don't look at the sanctimony of marriage. They would rather live together. And it's something that's been accepted. Look, love is powerful. Uh, you meet someone, and they meet all your cosmetic, physically uh, cosmetic. Uh, your, you, you look at that person and says, oh, it's everything that I wanted in him, in her, whatever. And you start a relationship and that's so awesome praise the lord and everything but if you're not born again and you're just living together it's not right it's sin and you think about it and it says what's so wrong with that the world doesn't understand that and we've got to show them tell them before you do that i suggest you pray about them go to the lord about them before you go to them about the lord because they don't understand And you've got to tell them that it's wrong. You can't do that. That's a, base, that's, that's a byproduct of the rebellion that came from, from sin in the first place. Romans 3.10 says that there's none righteous, no, not one. Romanos 3.10 dice que no hay nadie justo, no ninguno, dice... Uh, uh, como dice en español, no hay un solo justo, ni siquiera uno. So there's nobody that's righteous in and of themselves. We need Jesus. He is our righteousness. When we go before the Lord and we've sinned and we've messed up and we say, Father, forgive me and everything, he's looking at a righteous person because the blood of Jesus has covered your sins. Amen. 
Él ve una persona justa cuando alguien se arrepiente y va delante de Dios y le pide perdón. Dios está viendo una, una persona justa porque ha aceptado al Señor, ha aceptado la justicia de Dios, que es Cristo Jesús. And so, it's very, very important. Look at Romans 6.23. The scripture says, uh, well, I'm in Corinthians, let me see. Uh, Romans 6.23, scripture says, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. That's amazing. You know why it's so important here? Uh, it, it's so important that we be able to uh, repent and come before the Lord. Don't worry about what somebody's going to think and everything. Uh, don't, don't worry about who's looking. And you know what we should worry about is God, because God is looking. And, and we should worry about are we doing what God wants us to do. Now, in Revelation chapter 20, Uh, verses uh, 11 through 15. It's amazing. It's just a little section like this, but I want you to read it. It says, Then I saw a great white throne, and in him was seated on uh, a throne, and him who was seated on him, on it. The earth and the heavens fled from his presence, and there was no place for them. And that would mean probably to hide. If the heavens and everything blew away, the only person that you would see was the one that's sitting on the throne. And I saw the dead, great and small, standing before the throne, and books were open. Another book was open, which is the book of life. The dead were judged according to what they had done as recorded in the books. The sea gave up the dead that were in it, and death and Hades gave up the dead that were in them. And each person was judged according to what they had done. Then death and Hades were thrown into the lake of fire. The lake of fire is the second death. You see, when man dies here on earth, that's one death. But all man from the creation, will live eternally. Where remains to be seen? In the presence of God in heaven or not? In the presence of the enemy in, the, in, in hell. But it's an eternity. Now look, then death and Hades were thrown into the lake of fire. The lake of fire is, that, is the second death. Anyone whose name was not found written in the book of life was thrown into the lake of fire. Now, we read that God wants us to know the truth of salvation. God would that no man perish. The scripture says that uh, he, would, he wants all people to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. Now, when we read this scripture... Maybe you've read it before. Oh, yes, Timothy wants us to. And we'll pray for the policemen. We'll pray for the doctors. We'll pray for this and we'll pray for that. No good, shiftless attorney that this and this and this. No, we'll pray for him. We'll pray for her. We'll pray for the president. We'll pray for all of these because they're in authority. God is in authority. All right? And so... He wants everybody to say, be saved, but there is one God and one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. And I want to say to everyone that is within earshot of me and hearing this message, those of you by social media, if you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ, today is a day of salvation. If you accept him today as Lord and Savior of your life and you repent of your sins, your name will be written in the Lamb's book of life and you would not have to worry about the book of death. God is good. 
Amen. Let's pray. Romans 10, 13 says, uh, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. As I pray for that, I want you to pray for yourselves. And we're going to have communion this morning. And I want you to think and say, Lord, you know, uh, I've wronged somebody. I've sinned. Forgive me. I repay. You get right with God because we're going to have communion. Today is a wonderful day for forgiveness and health and healing. And uh, so that's an amazing thing. But I'm going to pray for those that want to accept Jesus in their heart. A simple prayer, if you would follow with me. Heavenly Father, I come before you a sinner. Forgive me my sins. Come into my life and save me. In Jesus' name, amen.